the kind that, that I'm talking about were minted in the East, probably in a, in a mint called Traxiana. There's not actually absolute certainty over that either. So these coins are something of a mystery, but I think they're very interesting coins. So let's get on to the first coin. Okay, this, this, this is the first example. It's a nice dram of Friates III, who ruled around, uh, the coin was probably minted around about 60, 70 BC, that kind of time period. We don't know exactly when, but about, about that time period. Um, it's uh, classified in Selwood's system as, as Selwood 38.9 variant. And the reason why it's called a variant is because if you look at the reverse, the reverse looks pretty atypical for a Parthian coin. First of all, it's got this sort of strange legend around here that doesn't look like it has any real sort of meaning to it. Um, and the archer is a very svelte archer for this kind of time period. Um, he's a nice looking guy though. He's got a nice helmet. Um, he's got a nice little throne. Um, and as I said, the, the, um, the reverse has got a, a really sort of strange set of letters. Um, there's even a theta there, which is kind of interesting. I think whoever designed these coins knew a little bit about Greek letters, but couldn't read or write Greek. And so he threw in a theta, even though the actual standard um, legend, which is down below here, doesn't have any thesis in it at all. That's why I say, I think the guy sort of was aware of, of Greek letters, but didn't really know um, very much about um, the language, reading and writing the language itself. The reverse I think is pretty attractive. I kind of like these reverses. We've got a nice portrait of Priates facing, facing left. He's wearing a diadem, got nice diadem ties at the back. He's wearing some kind of a tunic. It's a little obliterated by the strike and the wear. Um, in front of his face, there's, there's some strange marks in the, um, uh, in the surface, which are, which are actually marks in the dye. Um, and he has a nice, I think, a very sort of lifelike looking beard, a very lifelike looking appearance. There are three tufts at the bottom of his beard. Um, and that's, that's a point that I'll, I'll refer to time and time again. The weight on these coins are pretty good. The, the flat shape's a little bit off, but you know, that's, that's, that's not unusual for um, Parthian coins around about this period. Okay, so the coin itself, I got from Anne Van Haff, who I, I'm sure that some of you probably remember, and passed away a few years ago. I bought it from, from Anne in 2016. Um, he'd, he'd acquired it from David Walsh, who runs a, a, a dealership called Classical Coins. And in turn, it had been bought in a Malta auction in 1997. Um, the coin itself, I recognized when, I, when, when, when Anne offered it for sale, because it's one of the, it's one of the coins that's, that's featured in the Morris Clamp collection. This is a collection that was assembled in Iran in the 50s and was the subject of a PhD thesis in 1968 by Richard Olson. And Richard Olson was actually interested in letter forms. And the thesis is basically an analysis of the changes in the letter forms in the coins from, from, this, um, from the Quant collection, which was quite an extensive collection. And the coin itself was, was described in, 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 in his thesis and it was, a picture of it was published in 1982 in a series of articles that also wrote about the Maris Quant collection in the Collector's Journal of Ancient Arts, which is an in-house uh, journal for the dealer, Joel Malta, which I'm sure many of you probably remember too. This, these are, this is a page, uh, or, sorry, a, a, uh, an excerpt from Olson's 1968 thesis, which he describes the coin. And he also attempts to um, write out the um, legend, which is what's there. And you can see the legend doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Not too many characters actually even look Greek, but you know, there's a few, there's a Kappa and there's a Theta and so on. Um, Richard described it as a barbaric imitation, um, presumably because the reverse is so unusual and so, and so un, un, untypically Greek. Um, and there's a picture from his 1972 paper of the coin, which again, he describes it as a, as a barbaric imitation. When I got the coin, I'd, I'd, I'd only ever seen one other, one other example of this particular type, and that was the, the um, coin that's in Shaw's 1993 book. Um, this is a picture from, from uh, the, um, of, of the coin when it was sold by CNG in 1995. Chris Hopkins actually sent me this picture. He, he, he seems to do a much better job of taking photographs of, of um, coins in catalogs than I can. I always seem to get streaky lines on them and stuff, but and that's a picture of the of the coin in in Shaw's book. 
they weren't they weren't great images in Shaw's book, unfortunately. But the the amazing thing is that they're actually die matches. The die matches both on the obverse and the reverse. If you look at the the reverse again, you've got the spelt archer on the on the seat. You've got the, the strange characters. All the the letters are all match. The same thing with the reverse. Reverse is a little different condition. You've still got the you've got these uh, die marks, and there's some additional marks. I don't know what was going on. Maybe the die was deteriorating, um, but they're clearly from the same dies. And then in no last November, just a month or two ago, this, this coin showed up in a PARS auction. It's a third example with the same dies again. So I managed to win this in, in the PARS auction. A lot more expensive this time around. I think that's the probably due to this, you know, this interesting coin since the COVID outbreak and people having not much money to spend on other things or not much option to spend on other things. Very similar again. There's not so many of the service marks, but it, it, the coin is actually weakly struck on the right-hand side of the reverse. So a lot of the, um, uh, the, rever the, the legend itself is not showing. You can still see traces of the theta down here. Um, and it's actually easier to see it in hand when you, when you um, orient the um, coin in the light but it is weakly struck on that side. Um, and so here's the three coins together so you can compare them. The coin on the right there is a typical sort of obverse from one of the main uh, mints in the West, which is the Ekbatana mint. And you can see he has a fairly pointy looking beard and it's a lot tidier sort of, less naturalistic than, 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 than these coins from, um, uh, from Traxiana. And what I forgot to mention, of course, is that the, the, the reason that they're considered to be from Traxiana is the letter Ta or T underneath the um, O, which you can see quite clearly on that one and that one. Um, it's this T mint that Selwood, has, Selwood assigned to um, Traxiana. Anyhow, you can see the three coins lined up there. Um, they're looking pretty good. Um, there are a couple of tells for that. I, I, I got interested in, 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 in looking at the... Um, at the known examples of this type and see if I could find any more obverse matches because it's an interesting match. And a lot of these obverses, they look very similar. It's not always easy to find, but there, there are a lot of tells. Um, the, the two easiest ones are the three pointed, the three tufts at the bottom of the beard. And um, there's some folds in the end of the diadem. Okay, so this is actually all the um, known examples of, 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 of this coin type. Um, there's actually only seven of these coins known. The top coin here on the left is actually the same as this one. This is Selwood's type coin that he published in 1976. Then there are a couple of other coins that have appeared in auctions, that appeared in auctions, one of which is Sel another Selwood coin that he, didn't, he never published. This was from Puss. This coin here, which looks a little bit fuzzy is because it's a low resolution image, was on, on Tom Mallon's website which I'm sure many of you remember Tom Mallon too. Um, it's owned by some, it was, it was assigned to, to uh, the Jameson Graph Collection. And interestingly enough, as we look on the um, next page, it actually has the same obverse die, but the reverse die is not the same. It's got, it's got, a, it's got a, it's a very similar style. It's got the nice spelt archer, but the legend is very different. So, you know, somebody was busy, you know, crafting these things and, 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 and producing um, this, this chain of dies. It wasn't just sort of a one-off job. Okay, so if we go back, this is, this is gonna be my final slide, Pankaj. <laughs> if we go back to, to the seven um, coins, what it turns out is Selwood's coin, his type coin is actually very different from most of the other coins. Um, it, 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 interestingly enough, he does have the three tufts on the beard. And I think that the, uh, the, variant, of, uh, the variant reverse coins are modeled on obviously modeled on this type of coin. Th these three tufts on the bottom of, the, of, of, of his beard only occur in coins from Margiana and from Traxiana. So, the, and, and, not, and not in all of those coins either. The coins on the right are the two other coins. I think they're clearly lim uh, li uh, related stylistically. They're not exactly the same. They're not, they're not the same dies by any means. They have a really uh, bizarre reverse. The archer looks sort of squat and he has a ground is grounded, it has, it has a ground line, which is very unusual for coins of this period. So anyhow, I, um, that's my interesting coin for the day. And I'm, I'm, I'm now looking for more examples of Selwood's 38.9 coins, if I can find any. Um, and 
I, I, can, I did talk to Chris Hopkins. He, 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 only, he knows only the same seven coins that I know of. So they're pretty hard to find. And I'm collecting data on the obverses of the other Selwood 38 subtypes from the other Eastern Mints to compare them. Okay, thank you.